but let's start with something that we all uh, have access to in the asset browser here. Um, there is a simple cheetah hair example scene. Uh, so I'm going to uh, load that up and I'm gonna render this right now with, um, and I believe this is either standard or physical. Um, so this is not Redshift. Um, I just want you to see how this looks um, just right off the bat, because now I'm gonna switch to Redshift. And what I wanna point out is the actual hair color. Okay, so there's these you know highlights, right? The specularity that we're seeing on the, or, you know, around the perimeter. But on the inside, we're getting some, you know, black hair and we're getting some yellow hair, as we expect. Now I'm going to switch to um, Redshift, and I'm going to make a couple changes. I'm going to turn off GI, go low samples. Um, let's uh, turn off caustics, and under globals, I'm going to turn off the default light. And I think that will be good for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and start my Redshift IPR. And we're gonna get a lot of things just automatically um, being translated uh, as much as they can be uh, in Redshift. But one thing right off the bat is that the hair isn't really colored like it is in, um, you know, just using the Cinema 4D renderer. So what we need to do is we need to get a Redshift hair material. And I'm gonna go to the material manager. And, um, you know, what? before I do that, let me point out that with the Cinema 4D hair, we have, let's go large icon, let's take this hair out. Um, we have this, um, this base object with this material, which has uh, this texture, which has a spherical projection and three by three tiles on the UNV. Now in the hair material on, on there, the color for it is this brown gradient, right? But because this option is enabled in Cinema 4D's renderer, it's automatically using the surface color uh, from the body and, and this material with its spherical projection. But Redshift doesn't recognize that. Um, so let's see what we need to do. So I'm gonna create the Redshift hair material. So I'm going to the materials manager, Redshift materials, and then choosing hair. And I'm going to put this on top of the hair and turn the hair back on and force a refresh. I have noticed that I need to refresh a lot uh, in when I'm making changes to hair to get the update um, in, in the hair object. Now, I also wanna point out that we're only really getting these hairs here because the hair render Cinema 4D's hair renderer is uh, is here as a, you know one of the you know I guess it's like listed under post effects but um, but there's the the hair renderer if I disable it and do I need to refresh yeah and I'll refresh then there are no hairs from the hair object okay and this is specific to working with the hair object in Redshift. So I'm gonna turn that back on. Um, I don't think the sampling is relevant. Um, and uh, yeah, and we're not gonna worry about the multipasses or objects, but the point is this does need to be here uh, to render hairs if you're working with the Cinema 4D hair object. Um, later on, Jonas is gonna show us how to uh, render splines using this hair system. Um, so let me go ahead and close that and force a refresh so we can see the hairs back again. And let's return to this whole thing with the Redshift hair. Um, so this Redshift hair material, uh, you'll see in a moment, it has actually three nodes in it. So let me 
pop it open here. And the three nodes are the output, uh, which is the standard end node for any material. And then we have the redshift hair node. And redshift's Cinema 4D hair attributes node. OK, now let's actually see what nodes do we actually have here. So in the redshift shader graph, find nodes, I'm going to type hair. Now there are two types of hair materials. And then there are three additional hair uh, hair nodes. And we're going to look at all of them, starting with uh, this one, Cinema 4D Hair Attributes, which by default looks like that. And then the hair material by default looks like that. Now, this hair material is the same as this one, as this hair attributes is the same as this one. The, the difference is when we choose that Cinema, that Redshift hair material, it's automatically linked all of the relevant channels from Cinema 4D's hair material into the Redshift hair material. Now, this is not a perfect one-to-one. -one. Um, there are, after all, different renderers. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, we're not really getting the color on the hairs as we expect. And this is because the um, like I pointed out in the hair material color, there's the surface option. Well, this doesn't really play very well with the redshift hair. So what we need is the texture here. So I'm going to go to the material that's on the uh, on the body. And I'm going to copy this texture, and then in the uh, redshift. Uh, excuse me, in the hair material, let's close that. Let's go back to here. So I'm copying the texture that's on the body, and um, then I'm going to the hair material on that body and or on that hair object. I'm going to paste that uh, that cheetah shader, okay? And I'm going to, uh, we see a lot of white. You know, the specular strength is quite strong for redshift, so I'm going to turn that down to like 4%. Um, so we can see more of, and force a refresh, and see more of the underlying color rather than that, that specular reflection. Uh, so I'm just going to let this update. Uh, down here, I can see it's extracting, and then it was doing some of it. There we go. Um, so now I'm actually getting that hair color from this texture on, on the hairs but it doesn't really match up with the underlying uh, surface, which now I just disabled the hair so we could see it. So there's some, there's a spherical projection, there's uh, some tiling in the, in this. So we need to get the same thing here. How do we do that? Well, there's a specific shader exactly for this. It's called the projector shader. So I'm gonna go, into the texture drop down here in my Cinema 4D hair material, and I'm going to choose Effects Projector. Now, in the Projector Shader settings, I'm going to go in there, and I could do this all manually, but I will instead single click the tag that I want to take the settings from, and then I'm going to click on Paste Tag. Okay, so now it's automatically uh, all synced up. And if I go and let's turn the hair back on and refresh, and now we're gonna see uh, that the hair color matches the body color. Let's just give that a moment. There we are. Okay, so, you know, again, it's not uh, a perfect one-to-one -one comparison between, you know, Redshift and uh, Cinema 4D's renderers, um, but we are getting um, the, the color uh, on the hairs, which is the, the key point here. And the reason why it's working is because in the Redshift hair material, there is this out color. And this out color actually takes the um, like the UVs and ports them into the redshift hair. So the Cinema 4D hair attributes node 
is critical when you have a material on your model uh, and hair color is coming from that, uh, you know, and that texture is using UVs. You need uh, this hair attributes. Um, so we can color the hair using Cinema 40's hair material, uh, just as we typically do in Redshift. Uh, but Redshift has some additional nodes that um, give us even uh, more control and maybe even more straightforward and simple control. 